Rabies is an ancient disease, known to humans for thousands of years. The earliest recorded descriptions of rabies can be traced back to the Mesopotamian Codex of Eshnunna, circa 1930 BC, which dictates that the owner of a dog showing symptoms of rabies should take preventive measures against bites. Additionally, Aristotle, in 350 BC, wrote about a disease in dogs that could also affect humans and was likely rabies. However, the understanding of rabies as a specific disease entity and its transmission method evolved much later. The modern understanding of rabies and its etiology, causative agent, a virus, was not established until the 19th and 20th centuries. Louis Pasteur, a French microbiologist, was a key figure in this development. In 1885, he developed the first successful rabies vaccine, a significant milestone in the history of medicine and the study of infectious diseases. Rabies infection typically begins when the virus is transmitted to a human through the bite or scratch of an infected animal. The most common transmitters are mammals like dogs, bats, raccoons, skunks, and foxes. The rabies virus is present in the saliva of an infected animal and can also be transmitted if this saliva comes into contact with an open wound or a mucous membrane, such as those in the eyes, nose, or mouth. After the virus enters the body, it doesn't remain at the site of the bite. Instead, it travels through the peripheral nervous system toward the central nervous system, which includes the brain and spinal cord. This movement is relatively slow, which is why the incubation period for rabies, the time from infection to symptom onset, can vary widely. Typically, this period ranges from a few weeks to several months, but it can be longer in rare cases. The distance of the bite from the brain can affect the length of this period. Bites closer to the brain tend to have shorter incubation periods. Once the rabies virus reaches the central nervous system, it causes inflammation of the brain, known as encephalitis. This is when the initial symptoms of rabies usually appear. Early symptoms are often nonspecific and can include fever, headache, and general weakness or discomfort. As the disease progresses, more severe neurological symptoms develop. These can include insomnia, anxiety, confusion, slight or partial paralysis, excitation, hallucinations, agitation, hypersalivation, difficulty swallowing, and hydrophobia, fear of water. After symptoms appear, the virus spreads to other organs and systems in the body. At this stage, rabies is almost invariably fatal, typically leading to death within days to weeks due to respiratory failure. Prevention of rabies is crucial and is primarily achieved through the vaccination of animals and post-exposure prophylaxis, PEP, in humans following a potential exposure. PEP involves immediate and thorough washing of the wound, followed by a series of rabies vaccinations. If administered promptly before the onset of symptoms, PEP is highly effective at preventing the disease. Rabies is a viral disease that progresses through several stages, each marked by distinct symptoms. The disease begins with an incubation period, which is the time between the initial exposure to the rabies virus and the appearance of symptoms. This period can vary widely, typically lasting a few weeks to several months, but the individual shows no symptoms during this time. As the virus incubates, the first phase of symptoms, known as the prodromal phase, begins. This phase is characterized by general, nonspecific symptoms that can easily be mistaken for other illnesses. Individuals may experience fever, chills, general weakness or malaise, headache, discomfort or pain at the site of the bite, anxiety or restlessness, sore throat, cough, nausea, vomiting, and loss of appetite. These symptoms typically last for 2-10 days. Following the prodromal phase, the disease enters the acute neurological phase, where more severe symptoms manifest. This phase can present in one of two forms, furious rabies or paralytic rabies. Furious rabies, the more common form, is marked by episodes of extreme behavioral changes. Individuals may exhibit agitation, aggression, and hyperactivity, interspersed with periods of calm. Hallucinations and delirium are common. One of the hallmark symptoms of furious rabies is hydrophobia, or fear of water, which occurs due to difficulty swallowing and throat spasms. Aerophobia, or fear of drafts or fresh air, is also seen. Other symptoms include hypersalivation and insomnia. Paralytic rabies, on the other hand, 
is less dramatic but more insidious, often leading to misdiagnosis. It progresses more slowly and is characterized by gradual paralysis, starting at the site of the bite and spreading through the body. Muscle weakness and loss of muscle function are typical, and the condition eventually leads to coma. Regardless of the form it takes, rabies almost invariably leads to coma and death, usually due to respiratory failure. This typically occurs within a few days to a few weeks after the onset of severe symptoms. Given the severity of rabies, it's crucial to seek immediate medical attention after potential exposure to the virus, such as a bite from a potentially rabid animal. Post-exposure prophylaxis, if administered promptly, can prevent the virus from progressing to the symptomatic stage. Rabies is a critical viral infection where treatment is focused on prevention after exposure, as there is no effective cure once clinical symptoms have appeared. The approach to treating rabies exposure involves several key steps. The first and immediate response after a potential rabies exposure, such as an animal bite, is thorough wound care. This involves washing the area with soap and water for at least 15 minutes, which significantly reduces the virus load. After washing, applying an antiseptic with antivirus properties, like iodine, to the wound is advisable. Following this immediate care, seeking medical attention as soon as possible is crucial. A healthcare professional will assess the risk of rabies transmission based on the nature of the exposure, the animal involved, and other relevant factors. This assessment is vital in determining the next steps in treatment. If there is a risk of rabies, the healthcare provider will recommend a course of rabies post-exposure prophylaxis PEP. PEP is highly effective at preventing the disease if administered before symptoms begin. The treatment includes an administration of rabies immune globulin RIG, which provides immediate passive immunity. RIG is given only once, at the beginning of the treatment, and is infiltrated around and into the wound. Alongside RIG, the rabies vaccine is administered in a series of doses. The typical schedule for someone not previously vaccinated against rabies involves a dose on the day of exposure, followed by additional doses on subsequent days. For those previously vaccinated, the schedule usually involves fewer doses. Additionally, if the animal that caused the exposure can be observed or tested, this can guide the need for PEP. For instance, if a domestic dog or cat remains healthy after a 10-day observation period, or if laboratory tests of the animal are negative for rabies, then PEP might not be necessary. In the rare cases where rabies develops, meaning if symptoms appear, the treatment is purely supportive, focusing on keeping the patient comfortable and supporting vital functions. This often requires intensive care. However, the prognosis at this stage is typically poor, and the disease is almost invariably fatal. Prevention plays a crucial role in managing rabies. This includes regular vaccination of pets, avoiding contact with wild animals, and seeking prompt medical care following potential exposures. For people at high risk, such as veterinarians and animal handlers, pre-exposure prophylaxis through vaccination is also recommended.